Good morning, Emmanuel Christian School, and welcome to our Wednesday assembly. Now, I discovered yesterday that it isn't just Emmanuel Christian School, though, who's listening in. I counted by the end of yesterday that there are at least six other schools who are joining us for our morning assembly. So welcome to you as well. Welcome to the children from those schools who are joining us. It's great that you can be with us too. Now, normally on a Wednesday morning, we don't have an altogether assembly first thing. We meet in our classes. So this is a little bit different. Normally on a Wednesday, we meet together at lunchtime at one o'clock with Mrs Cook for a singing assembly. But I wasn't sure that you wanted to have a singing assembly with me singing to the screen and you singing back. Um, so I'm going to do singing assembly in a slightly different way by sharing with you the song that I was singing quite a lot to myself last week. Mr Guy will tell you I sometimes don't just sing to myself. You can tell that I've walked into the lodge because you hear the click of the door and then Mrs Nesbitt normally comes in singing something. But this was the song that I was singing a lot last week. But I want to tell you about where it started being sung this term. Some of you remember it was only four weeks ago that we had our mountains topic and we were climbing Everest with Tenzing Norgay and Edmund Hillary. And I thought it'd be really great at the end of our mountains topic to go and climb a mountain just like Tenzing Norgay and Edmund Hillary. But the problem is in Oxford, there aren't many high mountains around and the best I could find was Whitnam Clumps. But we postponed one week and then we were in the last week of the mountain topic and the rain just kept on coming and it was muddier and muddier. And one parent said to me, are we really going? I said, yes, let's be like John Hunt and go on an exciting expedition up Whitnam Clumps. And one parent even said to me, I think you're mad but they still came with us, so that was great. And we had a wonderful time sliding and slipping in the mud. And there was a great moment as we came down from Whitnam Clumps and three of you did a great impression of George Lowe and Tenzing Norgay and Edmund Hillary. Do you remember as George Lowe came down with his weary friends, he sat there with his axe pointing back at the summits. They did, they did it, they did it. They conquered Everest. And three of you came down, one who had a stick pointing back to the top of Whitnam Clumps. But I almost didn't get there. And the reason for that was that as I was leaving school, I set my sat nav, my directions on my phone to get to Whitnam Clumps, just in case I didn't want to get lost. I thought I knew the way, but I thought I'd get the sat nav to do it instead. So I set my sat nav and off I went. And I thought that we'd missed a turn um, off the road, but I thought, no, I'll keep going with my sat nav. I'll keep going with my sat nav. And more and more, I thought was this a very long way from Whitnam Clumps. And eventually my sat nav said, you have reached your destination. And I looked around me and I couldn't see anything that looked remotely like Whitnam Clumps. In fact, the only thing I could see to do with Whitnam Clumps was the fact that the road was called Whitnam Close. And for some reason, my sat nav, even though it said you were at Whitnam Clumps, took me to Whitnam Close. Now, thankfully, I had a parent who'd followed me and their sat nav seemed to be working. So I followed them out. And we got to Whitnam Clumps, but 15 minutes late. And as we came into the car park, the rain which had been coming down stopped. And I said, oh, great, the rain has stopped. God answered the prayer we prayed just as we left. Because just as we left school, I said to the girls in my car, why don't we pray that the rain stops? Because it does feel a bit wet and I'd rather not get wet. So we prayed. And as we came round into the car park, I said it stopped wow, God's answered our prayer. And one of you said, God works in all things, even us getting lost. And that's the verse I want to share with you today. In all things, God works for the good of those who love him. It's a verse from the book of Romans, Romans 8, verse 28. And the song I was singing last week was by a group called Slugs and Bugs. So I think you'll find that easy to look up on YouTube after this finish. Slugs and bugs in all things. And you'll realise the chorus is quite easy to remember once you get it into your system. And I want to share with you the three things that I've been helped by, by that verse. And the first is that God works. 
do you know when things are difficult it's so tempting isn't it to think I need to do lots of things what can I do I need to stay busy I need to fix this problem and there are times when God wants us to remember we're not in control but he is we might feel like we've been stopped but God is never stopped God is always working and that's a huge encouragement for particularly for parents I think where maybe you're a bit tired and we're trying to keep things going but to remember God works God is working God is sustaining and the second thing that I think it's really important for us to remember is that God works in all things now we sometimes like to think God works in good things because God is good so God works in good things but God works in all things. Sometimes we think God can work in some things. But God works in all things. And sometimes we think, well, God can work through things. And the amazing truth of this verse is that God works in all things. He's not standing at a distance just using things. He's working in them right in the middle of them. God is working. Isn't that amazing? God works in all things. Now yesterday I was listening to the podcast 13 Minutes to the Moon, the second half of episode one of the first series. And they were interviewing Werner von Braun who was a German man who'd helped make rockets which were really really destructive. And then the Americans discovered he knew how to make rockets and they wanted to use him in their rocket making program to get into space and then eventually to get to the moon. And so they brought him over and it was his thinking about rockets that really led to the Saturn V, which got Apollo 11 up to the moon and to their famous moon landing. And I was thinking about that when I was thinking about this verse from Romans because it says God works in all things for the good god is able to work in all things because he's even able to take what is hard and difficult and use it for a good and wonderful thing and the good and wonderful thing that the bible talks about is the good and wonderful thing of knowing jesus better and becoming more like him because the end of the verse says he works for the good of those who love him who've been called and he wants to shape us more and more to be like him. So I want to encourage you with those words today that in all things God works for the good of those who love him and I'd really encourage you to go and find the song with your parents after this and sing it to one another. Remember even in the hard things not just in some things, not just through things, but in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you that when so many things feel outside of our control, you go on working in all things for the good of those who love you. So please help us in all things today to be able to that, sing that song, trusting you that you're working for good. And we pray for our country and we pray for our leaders that God, you would work directing and guiding them and helping them, Lord, to seek what's good for this country and to lead with wisdom and humility, we pray. For Jesus' sake. Amen.